Welcome to Ivor's Declassified Modern Survival Guide. Today we're going to be talking about maple sugaring. And I used to do maple sugaring on a much bigger scale, but now I'm doing it as a backyarder. And this is something that basically anybody could do. And so here's my little setup here. Here's some wood back here, ready to feed the fires. See? And some kindling and uh, my old campaign sign. And here we are in the backyard, literally in the backyard. And uh, here's the little sugar shack. I'll show you guys. Let me just move that a little bit. Whoops, okay, here's a little tiny sugar shack. It's not ready yet. I don't have the, the boiler set up yet. And it doesn't want to let go, so maybe that's, here it is anyway. It's back here. There's nothing to see really because it's all covered with tarp and stuff. So we'll see this later because we're going to be cooking down the sap we get in the backyard. And the coolest thing about this is you can cook down your backyard sap into a syrup that tastes mighty good on pancakes. And so this is another way to sort of like save money, but mostly it's a fun hobby. You'll see. So we're gonna go to the first tree. We got our little sled all ready here. We're right, ready to go to the first trees. And I got a big tree over here that we're gonna put a bucket on. Whoa. See if this thing follows me nicely or not. Trying to mush down. And now here's one that we tapped the other day. This is a little sugar maple. And so, if we take a look in there, guess what? Sap. See that? So that came down the other day. Today it's a little too cold for sap production. But that shows you it is working. Jeezum. We might be uh, doing a little boiling this weekend. So I'm gonna kinda drag her up here. Past this other one. And this guy is a Norway maple. Acer platinoides, but you know what? Doing just fine. That's a half a bucket, so I mean a quarter of a bucket, so we're good. And as you guys know, probably, it takes 40 gallons of this stuff to make one gallon of syrup, which is kind of a crazy amount. So we're gonna continue along. Lugging, 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 lugging. But I want to make a nice flat path here with the snowshoes because otherwise it's a pain in the neck because of course I probably won't be using snowshoes later. So I'm going to first mush myself out a nice flat spot where the bucket will sit, right? And then we're gonna get ourselves one of these here that has two taps on it. We wanna have two taps. So, I had to take this thing apart, but better do it. So these are my, this is stuff that we kinda had a whole lot of tubing left over. So in this micro thing, you can definitely use tubing. And it makes it a little easier because, you know, then you go, especially if you have two or three trees, you go down the hill and uh, hook up the bucket. Like this, I think, will work. It's got two taps, because this is a big one, big tree. And it's got, comes down to one. So then we're going to use one of our buckets in a second here. And we're going to use one that has two taps on it. Okay, so here I am. 
And I like to tap pretty far apart, kind of. I like to have them pretty far apart so that I'm not getting the same side of the tree. Because I think the tree gets a little bit tired of having the same side. So I'm going to tap one way over here. And notice it. Here's my one from last year. This baby healed right up. So I want to be about a hand's width over from where I tapped last year. So I'll go here. And I just go in just a little ways. That's pretty good right there. Right? And it actually feels a little wet. Even though this is not a real warm day, this stuff feels a little bit wet. So a little moist. Oh, guess what we forgot? A hammer. I'll be right back. A few moments later. Boy, this is steep. You can do this if you want, you know. I don't know if it's entertaining. Oh my god. This is mega steep. I'm gonna go this way. Yowza. Yowza. I think so, especially if I fall or something. That'll be really entertaining for the masses. Hang on. I'm getting there. If I get to that tree, yes, I got it. Okay. Hang on one sec. I'll be right back. What the Okay. Okay. Be right back. Here's where it gets fun. Putting my gloves on so that if I do fall, I can fall spectacularly. All right, here we go. Well, this is good also because if people visit, it's good if there's like a real little, obvious little trail down. Whoa, yikes! <laughs> Which now, there is. I'm making it with my butt. You see, that'll help. That'll help. That's that's good for ratings, right? All right. All right. Now I got a hammer, but not a real hammer. It's just kind of a club. But when you tap the tree, there ain't no need. Oh, guess what? Look at it. That baby is running. We were not expecting it to run. But you know what? She's running. So we don't want to miss any of it. We want to catch every bit of it. Now the thing is I can use this little club because you're not hammering, you're tapping. So any old thing will work. So there she be, catching that bit of sap coming out of this old Acer platinoides. This is a tree from Europe, a maple from Europe, called a Norway maple. Think about these babies. Don't worry about over tapping them. Because you know what? They're tough. They can take it. This thing comes from Sweden and stuff like me, right? So you ain't gonna worry about over tapping the old Acer platinoides. They're the workhorse. Of the They're the workhorse, but the other thing is, oh, look at it, it's dripping. Would you look at that, it's coming down here like this. Jeez, I'm criny. I did not expect to see anything, because it's only like 34 degrees. This thing is not, this was not predicted. Okay, ready? Tap, tap, tapping it in there. Not slamming, not hammering, just tap, tap, tapping, nice and mellow. So that baby's in there, and that drip is coming down here. And then, getting our bucket. And the thing about it is, we only need one hole coming in it. So we pick one of our tops that we already drilled last year that has one hole. And then we get one of our buckets, pull it out of there, and jeez them. I, could, I can't believe it. I didn't think we'd get anything today. But now I see it going down the... She's drooling right down the pipe. See that? Every drop. 
we are gonna catch every single drop of this liquid sweetness and put her right in our bucket. So. That's good. That's gonna fill right up. So tell our back a little bit about your methodology. My methodology is, these are, uh, I, uh, uh, what I did was, I dipped the ends of these in hot water. And then you can cram them onto the yeah. taps and stuff. And then I also did a, a Y right here. It loosens it up so that then you can cram them on. Yeah. And then you once you got it crammed on there, then you got a pretty good little thing here. I, I, uh, I want it going downhill, so um, I'm going to kind of, what? Uh, Cleanliness. Yes, system. yes. Also, this is pretty clean. I mean, look at that. That's going right into in here, right? So we don't got to worry. That's going to fill right up with sap. I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have, you know, half a bucket. Well, you never know. I, I really have no idea, actually. That's the one thing is I always just, people always just ask me, do you think it'll be a good year? And at first I would explain all sorts of things. I say, well, it's been a little warm. I think it might be different, whatever. And what I really thought was, I have no idea. Who knows? Is it gonna be a good year, bad year? I don't know. You could jump into the 80s next week and it'll Yeah, be it'll be over. So this is nature. And you're just collecting what mother nature wants to give us, which is sweet stuff for our pancakes. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to do this at all, I think. You know, it's kind of a New England, a special thing in the Northeast and New England. I guess they do tapping in other places. Like in Korea, they tap the trees, but no, they don't boil it down. They just drink gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons of the sap, and they call it a spring tonic. And I actually admit, I do that too. People, some people do that. I mean, I don't drink a lot, but I just drink some. Just to feel like you got a little spring tonic in you, right? Like something's happening. Oh, yeah, it's full of antioxidants that fight the free radicals, right? Well, I mean, you're, you're just concentrated. You don't really lose anything. It all just goes into the sap, into the syrup. Don't worry. Syrup is full of sodium, potassium, all sorts of wonderful things. We're going to try. <laughs> Should we do another um, section? And we'll do another tree or two. We got two more. Let's see. Now this is a sugar baby. And this turns out to be one of the best trees on the lot. Um, actually, we used to name our trees. So this one here uh, needs a name. What do you think? I'm thinking uh, here in Maine, they call rock maples. So why don't we call this one Rocky? This here is rocky. rocky. Now you can tap it on different sides. This side here is the south side. So that's gonna run best early in the season. And so I think I'm gonna tap it on the south side. And you can see I tapped it here last year and it healed up. So oh, where's our, there's our hole. And notice, if you get in close, you can see that hole is almost healed. So rocky is healthy. So I'm gonna go on hands width away. And I'm going to tap on the south side right here. And I'll bet you Rocky on a south, on a, on a south side, he's, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, almighty. Ready to go. I'll tell you. Will you explain to our viewers um, what you don't want to do in this situation? You want to have it, uh, when you do it, you want to have the right size bit, and notice how the, the drill is tipped ever so slightly down like this. Well, very, I mean, this is going to seem obvious, but you want the sap to run downhill into the bucket, right? So you want to tip slightly, but if you just hold, this, hold the drill exactly like this, 
That'll give you exactly the right. No, it'll give you exactly the right thing. Because see, if I hold it straight, it's going to be tipped slightly back. <laughs> Obviously, Rocky, Rocky is giving us some sap. And you don't have to worry about, if you don't over tap, you're not hurting the tree too much. Because the thing about these guys is, the, the sort of the deal you're making is, you're taking a little bit of their sap and uh, you're kind of giving them room to live, right? Room to move by cutting out above them and stuff like that. So you're kind of making it possible. It's just sort of a symbiotic relationship, right? They give you a little bit of sweet stuff and you give them room to move. So a good thing to do is to cut out your sugar bush just a little just enough so that they get more light and air. And if you look up at the top of Rocky up there, see Rocky, he's gonna fill that space as best he can. And he's getting crowded by other trees, but of course a lot of them are maples. So he's gonna, uh, you just give them a little light and air and they can grow. And that's what, sort of the deal you're making with them. And that one's too big. That's too darn big. I think you'll cut the ash out of here. I think the ash, you don't have to worry. Ash is going to die. I mean, I don't think it's, yeah, I mean, slowly but surely, I'm going to cut any ash trees and just use them for firewood, you know? But yeah, yeah, I probably cut the ash out. You know, it's just going to die, it's, it's die anyway. And you know, I'm realizing, because there's an ash borer that's coming in and eating all of our ash trees which really kind of stinks because ashes are a nice you know kind of a a nice tree in fact the vikings believe that that was the the beginning was the ash tree you know and the wabanaki also so i'm gonna drill this out a little bit bigger because this is not strictly recommended but I got a bigger tap. And you want that hole to be pretty clean. Yes, you want it pretty clean and you want it to fit pretty tight. Okay. It's in there. We're going to get another bucket. And I got the buckets, well, you know. I just you can get these buckets anywhere. They're like Walmart, Tractor Supply, anywhere. Yeah, they are food bu food grade buckets. What so, food I'm not sure, two but one, yeah, number two. Well, one is clear anyway, so two is what these usually are. Now they have a nice tight lid, so the good thing about that is, even if they fall over or something, you're still getting some. You know, you have some sap in there, and guess what? It's wet right where it's going in now. So it's going down into that bucket. You better believe it. Jeezum! Okay, we're set. And this guy, I'm gonna stomp him down a nice flat spot for this bucket so as we don't lose it. You know, sometimes if it's really windy, I'll just tie them to the tree, you know? <laughs> yeah, and the thing I like about these buckets is you can just peel it the top off a little bit, pour it into your collector bucket. It's not hard to do. And so now we'll do the last one, which has two coming into it. So we'll get another one of our, like, two rigs. And we're going to... No, I'm do more. I mean, I'm obviously going to do more trees, but for this video, it gets a little repetitive, don't you think? <laughs> so, so we don't want to like bore our our uh, viewers on channel 11. Never like. Chase them. We don't want to like boring our. You know, we're not all about that. We're all about exciting, fun stuff to do in your own backyard. So now we're going to head down to the. I call it the trio. Yeah, it's a biggie. 
It's okay. Actually, we'll head to these two guys right here. Now these two, one of these is a sugar, and this one here is a Acerplatinoides, or a, uh, the old Norway maple. And they both produce about the same, even though the sugar is much smaller. Isn't that weird? Now these Yes, you have to look up and you see how the uh, branches are kind of wild looking. Well, uh, an ash is much more organized. Yeah. It's more sticky. It sticks that sticks sort of straight up. With these guys, it's uh, they're kind of all over the place. Yeah. And they have alternate branching. See, that's the thing about uh, maples is alternate branching. See how it comes off of the other side of each other? That's an alternate branching. So it's, it's pretty obvious to me which a maple, what is a maple, but not to everybody. Because this has bark that can fool you. Yeah. Looks just like an ash. Yeah. So. I like to go out right up to the end of this thing. That's probably good. Okay, and then I'm gonna tap, tap, tap our tap in there. And these are a little smaller, but I figure, hey, why overtax these guys? She's going. She is ready to go. And then this guy over here, we gotta find where it was tapped last year, which one is pretty obvious right here. So we're gonna go a hand's width away from it. Uh-oh, we're not running out of juice. But I might be. This guy is juicy, he's ready to go. That's all I really need. That's it, but you can see all of it's pretty juicy. You just give it a second and it clears itself out. That way you don't have to blow in the hole, which a lot of people do, but you don't need to. It'll sort of clean itself out just from the juiciness of it. And you can see it's dripping. It is dripping. We are at the middle, or we're at the sweet spot of the maple season right here. This is it. We're getting what nature wants to give us right now Rutcher here in Skowigan, Maine. We're getting what it gives us. And I'll tell you, it's given. It's the giving tree. Now we're gonna dump, my wife hates that, that book. It's pretty gruesome. Yes, it's just like, okay, chop me down. It's depressing. It's kind of like, I mean, you know, you can see how you feel like that sometimes. But you know, it's kind of stupid. Anyway, and I'll put the top on here. And this one really only requires a single top. But the beautiful thing is, see, both of these trees are gonna give you some sap. And you know, the good thing is I got a little extra tubing here. I could move this to whatever the most convenient place is for me to have it. Like it could even be down here so I could pick it up, right? As I walk through, it's pretty easy like that, right? Or I could put it up top or wherever. I don't you know. Gonna put them where they're needed. So this is the backyarder version of maple syruping. And if you look on YouTube and stuff, you'll see lots of other videos. One made by John here, John Harlow of Channel 11. It's been on Channel 11 quite a lot of sugaring. And so we'll go look at one other tree, which is kind of interesting because it's not a sugar and not a Norway. And I really don't know exactly what it is, but it's a maple for sure, right? Here's some other ones we're gonna tap. Notice that one there, see that ice? That means something injured it. 
and it's coming out already. So, and this tr these two trees right here are really weird. Because this one and its friend over here are actually not uh, sugar maples. And they're not Norway maples. I think what they are is they're a hybrid of a red and a silver maple. What do they call them? Uh, they're actually called, they actually mix them intentionally and they call them the Acer Fremani cross, which is the most, the toughest street tree in the world. Like, I mean, you know, the street maple. We planted a couple of these in different places, in different parks here and down on the coast. And they're very salt tolerant. They can be planted on a street. They don't mind. In fact, they plant them. As you go into Augusta, you'll see, uh, Tons of them, flame maples, planted right up the median street in Augusta, which has got to be a tough place to be a tree. Yeah. But they managed to hold up. You know, they do okay. Yeah. So they're called Asia Fremonti Cross, but these are volunteers. I think they crossed on their own. And so if you look up, you see there are already lots of little dots on them. You see that? They're one of the first ones to flower and, I mean, to, uh, to open up in the spring. They, they love it. So, so that's why you got to catch them now. They're already in preparation for getting going. And the idea of uh, the sap is, the sap is going up. It's sugary stuff. It's going up, 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 up there. And it's at 35 pounds per square inch. So that pushes it all the way to the top of the tree. And it begins to feed those buds and get them going. And then they turn into leaves and then you have spring and summertime. So the, and then in the summer they store lots more um, energy and they put it down in like the roots and different, well they're not exactly sure where, but probably in the roots. They store that energy and then they're ready to go in the spring. So we're, we're uh, this is the first crop that a lot of farmers used to get here in Somerset County. And actually the Luces who are up in Madison, or past Madison, Anson, way up in North Anson, they managed to Apparently, everybody else was frozen out by that. Uh, the volcano exploded, and it was the year without a summer, and nobody else had any kind of cash money, but the Luces had a little tiny bit from maple sugaring. So that managed to, allowed them to stay farming, and they've been doing it all the way till now. So it's one of the uh, earliest, first things that you get off of any land around here in Somerset County. So we're doing micro scale, but they're doing big time, the big guys. Okay, so we did a little bit of tapping today, got our buckets in, and uh, we're ready to go. We now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine taps in. So thank you guys for coming to this episode of Ivers. Declassified Modern Survival Guide. And we'll see you next time.